I'd like to share my story about my eye injuries. I'm hoping by doing so that I might help some others provide some solace in a difficult time for some people who may be experiencing the same problems that I have. Today is April 25th, 2023. I'm scheduled tomorrow to have what's called pars plana vitrectomy surgery and epiretinal membrane surgery. here in the Fox Valley of Wisconsin. My eye problems started in mid-October of last year, mid-October of 2022. What happened was I woke up one morning and I could barely see out of my left eye. I could see color, I could see shape, I could see movement. But I was very worried because I've never had any problems with my eyes previously. Now, quick disclaimer, nothing in this video should be taken as personal medical advice. I'm not a medical expert by any means. If you do have any sort of problems with your eyes, see an optometrist or ophthalmologist. If you're experiencing a problem with your eye, see an optometrist or ophthalmologist immediately because the situation, like my situation, may be a medical emergency. I delayed seeing an optometrist for two days. I knew something was wrong, but I thought maybe the problem would go away. My left field of vision was much darker and over those next two days my condition worsened. I wasn't able to make any detail out up close or at a distance. I went in to see an optometrist. I spoke with one of the assistants and they said what's going on with your eye and I said I had researched a little and I said I think I have a vitreous hemorrhage and some retinal tears or detached retina. Uh, the assistant kind of looked at me funnily. I don't think she realized the gravity of my situation and I thought, I think maybe she thought I was exaggerating. I knew it was something serious she said she was going to have the doctor, the optometrist, talk to me um, in a while. However, she ran some tests and then some more tests were run. And then finally I did see the optometrist and she said my condition was very serious in my left eye. My condition was grave and that I needed to have emergency laser surgery on my eye because I had a vitreous hemorrhage and several retinal tears. So what my self-diagnosis was correct. Now, I went in that day uh, for laser surgery and I wanna show you this very basic drawing of an eye. This is the front of the eye and this is where the cornea, the iris, and the pupil are. And this is the back of the eye. And the retina is in the interior back of the eye. And this would be the optic nerve going to the, the brain. So this is a very basic drawing, but this retinal wall had several tears in it. And one of the veins supplying the eye or arteries supplying, feeding the eye exploded and tens of thousands of little tiny specks of blood were floating in my eye. So I had not had any floaters previously, and I went from having no floaters to 
having tens of thousands of floaters. And what did this look like? It looked like a swirling cloud of little tiny, tiny, tiny red dots. They had a slight reddish hue. And they'd be swirling around and everything I looked at, it'd be, I could like, it was this three dimensional swirl. And what I was seeing was, as I was, the back of my eye, the retina, as I was seeing through the eye, these ten, I was seeing these tens of thousands of little tiny dots of blood. So I had the laser surgery, which was not too painful. It took about 15, 20 minutes. The doctor described my eye as this. He said, it's like your eye is trying to self-destruct. So that was at the end of October. And through November and into December, my eye improved gradually. Uh, the floaters were gradually dissipating. However, for the first few days after that laser, sur laser surgery, it was worse. And then there was this gradual improvement until about December 20th, uh, at which time I was up to about maybe 95% of my eyesight in my left eye had been recovered. Then I came down with this terrible like strep throat, cold, sore throat that lasted several days and my condition started the gains, the improvements in my eye gradually started eroding. I started the improvement turned around and gradually my sight started getting worse and worse and I went in in the first week of January and the doctor said yeah your sight has worsened let's give it a little time here and see if maybe if it improves well unfortunately it didn't improve it became worse and worse and worse and what was I seeing now? Well, again, everything on this side, out of my left eye, there's no detail. No detail up close, no detail at a distance, no peripheral vision, and of course my depth of field, because your depth of field relies on both eyes, my depth of field is shot. So, condition worsened and worsened, and I had an upcoming appointment April 6th and we had agreed in January that he'd take a look at my right eye on April 6th as well as to see what was going on with my left eye. Well, I knew my left eye was shot and I did a lot of research and I knew that I probably was going to need surgery on my left eye. So I went in April 6th and uh, the assistants ran some tests and it was clear to them that my vision was not clear uh, because I could not read any of the I couldn't even see the letters on the eye test projection went to see I then went in to see the doctor and by the way it was a, an ophthalmologist who did the surgery on my eye just a reminder an optometrist is not a medical doctor they are a doctor and they are an eye expert however if you have eye surgery you'll be seeing an ophthalmologist so he took a look at my right eye and he said are you seeing any floaters there because you have several tears in your right eye now and there's a leak in the wall, the retinal wall. So he did the laser surgery on my right eye as an emergency surgery on that April 6th. And he said he did over 500 or 600 welds to with the laser. Now that first time I had the laser surgery done in late October, the surgery was not very painful. It was uncomfortable and felt odd. However, this time the laser surgery was very painful. 
it felt like somebody was burning and cutting the back of my eye with a laser beam, which was exactly what was happening. So he did catch that luckily and seemed fine out of the right eye. I'm not really able to tell any difference before and after. As for the left eye, he said, yeah, you're going to need vitrectomy surgery uh, because the situation with your left eye is very bad. He said my left eye was one of the two or three worst cases he'd seen in his career. When he said one of the two or three worst cases, he was referring to the amount of tissue that had built up on my retina and also to the amount of eyesight that I had lost. So if we look at this, what happened was all those tens of thousands of little blood cells and blood material, rather than being reabsorbed by the eye, some of them were reabsorbed, but what happened was they floated like snow to the back of the eye and and formed a thick layer of scar tissue here. So what happens when the light comes through my eye and when I'm trying to see out uh, the retina, which has all of the rods and cones, which resolve visual images, are covered by this thick layer of scar tissue. So with the vitrectomy, what the doctor is going to do tomorrow is he's going to, the gel here in the eye is called vitreous. He's going to drain that gel out and he's going to peel away that layer of, or those layers of scar tissue. So there's a 90% chance of getting 50% of my left eyesight back which at this point I'd be happy to get 50% back. There are some risks involved. I'm 56 years old and only 2% of people my age have this problem. So it is not typical for someone my age. Now when somebody gets into their 60s and 70s, I've read that it's more 10% of people can have this problem. So the surgery is tomorrow the surgery itself could last from a half hour to an hour and depending upon what he finds when he gets in there how easily he's able to peel that lay that retinal uh, scar tissue off of the retina and I was given the option of general anesthesia or local anesthesia. With local anesthesia, they uh, anest anesthetize this area of the eye and and they um, you're asleep for 10 minutes and then one wakes up while the surgery takes place. General anesthesia, of course, is when the whole body and brain is put to sleep and of course that carries a lot more risk uh, because then one has a breathing tube and there's a lot more stress on the body with general anesthesia, so I went with uh, with the local anesthesia. Now, with the uh, with this vitrectomy surgery, the doctor and on one part of the eye he puts in a needle that has like a tweezers on it, and then the other side he he puts in a long needle that has a light on it and then there's a third uh, needle type device which I guess is like a drainage device so the eye actually the eyeball actually has three uh, three needles stuck in it and and he drains out that that vitreous gel and then with that tool he peels away that or those layers of retinal scar tissue. So 
I'm not looking forward to the surgery. However, I'm looking forward to hopefully regaining some of my sight. I can't stress enough that if you experience any sort of change in your sight to see a doctor, this can happen so quickly and so unexpectedly. One of my great fears has always been blindness and the eyes after the brain, the eyes are the most critical organs of the human body. I mean, the eyes are part of the nervous system. So one wants to do everything they can to protect and preserve their eyes. So if you have any sort of issues, see an optometrist as soon as possible. Because again, your situation might be like mine was where the situation is an emergency, a medical emergency. I will make a follow-up video tomorrow or after the surgery or, or Thursday as soon as I'm able to describing what happened with the surgery and then I'll make a, a progress report to describe how well my sight has or has not been restored. With surgery, of course, there are always risks and there's like a two to 3% risk of complications with this surgery. Uh, there can be infections, there can be uh, further damage to the eye that can occur while the surgery is taking place. So although this retinal surgery this vitrectomy has been around for many years and is much improved because of medical technology. There are, there continue to be risks with surgery. Of course, anytime one goes into a hospital, there are risks. However, anytime one walks outside their house, there are risks. So thank you so much for watching.